guest uh, today is Kyle Brown. He's uh, one of the head leaders of Ecclesia of Oklahoma, the uh, nonprofit organization that uh, trying to involve uh, Christian Church into political uh, actions, and also as the chair for Logan County uh, Republican Party for the last four years, I guess, right, Kyle? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we're talking to tonight about a few things uh, that's uh, happening right now in the country. And the first, of course, the uh, indictment of President Trump. And uh, you as the part of uh, Republican Party and uh, not just uh, the voter, but the person who was involved in the processes and you know what's going on inside. So how did this event affect uh, the party? What's going on right now? What people think? What the like, hey, we we done or what? <laughs> what is it? Yeah, I would say that the majority of the people that I've seen in the Republican Party, it's it's hard because you kind of have to differentiate the common voter from those in the party. And uh, because the, and I would say in the party leadership in the party right now, leadership in the party is looking their best to try to find the safe bet. They usually always do that, um, whatever it is. And so right now the party is kind of taking a neutral stance on what's happening with Donald Trump, which is interesting. The GOP as a whole across the board um, in most states aren't doing a lot right now to help President Trump. And the people, though, the people, I think the people of America are frustrated. They realize how big of an insanity this thing is um, that a DA now is prosecuting a sitting president for something that's a bogus crime that a 34 felony indictments for something that was already appealed or they appealed in the, in the Ninth Circuit Court. Um, he already was rewarded money for the same type of charge for the same type of thing. But this rogue DA in New York is uh, just trying to do what he can to have political theater. So the people, I would say, are upset, and we realize what it is. It's just political theater. Um, they The first time that he has to appear, Mix, is interesting, again, is December in court. It's just insane. So they're they're trying their best to go to and you know this Bolshevik tactics to uh, try to intimidate and use legislation to legislative efforts or judicial efforts to try to smear a political opponent. And so the major the GOP right now, and I say this because I you just said I've been for the past four years I've been in the Republican Party here in Oklahoma. One of the things that's disenfranchising is while the conservative base is fully I, I believe fully behind Trump with a few heads really kind of weighing towards DeSantis. They for the whole are outraged at this. They're outraged that the lack of action from the Re Republic trying to step back and say um, what's going on and the lack of response. Like um, I would say even from most anybody in the Republican party, there's no governors, there's no DAs in the Republican party speaking out against this. It's really just a conservative talking heads doing it. So I'm kind of frustrated right now because it's probably the one of the grossest um, displays of power I've seen ever by the Democrats in however long. And right now, the Republican Party is just sitting on their hands. So he, he, is this is uh, is this is the reason uh, that, that you you're not running for re-election as the chairman for the Logan County uh, or it's or is some other reasons for it yeah no I would say this is one of the reasons and it's it's hard because the uh, the the GOP itself the political entity of the GOP is a is a club it's a club that's supposed to uh, represent Republican conservative values um, and even hold, I would say, a standard towards what it means to be a Republican or to re be a reflection of what the Republican means in America. But right now what it's become is it's paid for and bought for by a lot of establishment and a lot of, uh, how would you say, um, political officials in the first place. So what happens is it becomes a stepping ladder 
for those who have ambitions in politics. So they right now don't take any stances really that are going that are controversial. So right now, the Ronna McDaniel, the head of the GOP nationally, the uh, the RNC chair, she right now is aligning with uh, the log cabin Republicans, which is the pro LGBTQ plus Republicans. And she's doing her best to make the Republican Party a very open and I would say inclusive socially um, when her base doesn't believe that or agree with that. So there's a lot of things happening because they're trying to make sure they're not marginalized, that they miss out, especially with Trump. They don't want to speak out for Trump before a primary because they want to make sure they don't upset somebody like DeSantis. So, yeah, that's one of the reasons they uh, they don't really do a lot policy wise either in that same vein because they're afraid of offending someone, I would say, or making sure they have a political position in the future. Well, with all that, uh, as far as I know, DeSantis already speak out in support of President Trump and in all this situation. So uh, does that mean that uh, Republican Party establishment try to be like more protective for themselves than even uh, some ki- candidates that can run against Trump? Yeah, no, I, I would for sure say they are. Um, you know, it's interesting is DeSantis had the opportunity there for a second to really say, because he has a governor of the state could say, hey, federal, tr- I mean, federal officers, you're not going to come here in the state of New York. We're not going to extradite him. But what he said was, I'm, I'm not going to participate. I'm not going to I'm not going to extradite him instead of saying, like, no, there's no way he's going to get arrested, period. And so he took a line. But what's interesting, if you watch the news interview, he never mentions Trump's name. From my recollection, he never mentions Trump's name during that interview, which is really interesting. He's a very smart man. So he did as much as he could to to say, I'm not going to you know, arrest President Trump at the same time of not giving him any giving him any support. So but yeah, no, they won't even go that far, though. They won't even go that far. OK, so uh, with all that being said. And it, I, I, I think you know uh, uh, who Rodney Howard Brown is. Uh, yes, yes. Preacher from Florida, by the way. So he said years ago, like, uh, Democrats and Republicans are two heads of one snake. <laughs> yeah. And I don't, I don't know how, how offensive it sounds for you. To you, since you've, you've, you've been with the party for, for a while, uh, but what do you think about this saying? Um, yeah, no, I would. Uh, ain't, ain't that too rough? Maybe, maybe it's kind of. Yeah, I mean, no, I would say if you, if you're engaged in the political process, I don't think you'd have any problem saying that. Right now, on a national level, there's only a handful of people that are legitimately pushing for conservative fiscal policy, conservative social policy, conservative, uh, um, I'd say foreign foreign policy, um, and that there's just a handful. I would say Matt Gates. Um, Rand Paul and um, uh, just a few others. I mean, just a few others in that. Um, there's I'm a Thomas Massey is probably my favorite from Kentucky. And those three or four, um, and you could even go through those, are probably the only ones right now that you could legitimately say are really Republican in nature or even conservative in nature. So, yeah, no, I would agree. Um, they – even here on a local level in the state of Oklahoma, the legislative efforts that go across the aisle back and forward and really are just compromises for bigger lobbyist corporations. It's uh, it's, it's amazing. Uh, well, everybody everywhere believe that Oklahoma is one of the most conservative states in the United States. And we know that we have like, well, I mean, we have Republicans everywhere. We, we have all the, I mean, uh, yeah. This, our senators, our congressmen, and even on the state level, I was checking the list, and I think it's maybe two or three Democrats, even in state Congress, the rest yeah. are Republicans. But I was talking just recently uh, with a with economist, with a financial uh, consult consultor, and uh, it turns like uh, the whole high taxes that we got in the last a couple of years that were established by Republicans that's supposed to be for the low taxes. Uh, so what I got, I'm not sure if, if this is definitely 
correct information. But what I got is that the businesses here in Oklahoma are struggling uh, financially now in all the bad economic situation because there is a pretty high state uh, taxes uh, plus with all the uh, federal issues we have. So uh, how is how is that building with the conservatism and with with the idea of low tech taxation and with all that and how is it possible and sh should we should we speak about it on, on, on the serious level because really we believe that we live in a conservative state but when you start checking some things you're gonna ah, mm, not quite right right no i mean i uh, i agree 100 percent. it's yeah we are probably we're every the only state i think that in every county voted for trump in the past two primary elections for president and so that's a big deal and with that, though, you're right. There's, we have a super majority in our House, in our Senate here in the state, and the legislative things that we pass. You're right. In the past 10 years, we've passed the largest tax increase in state history. Um, and we've also had the opportunity in the past 20 years to end, end abortion before Roe v. Wade. And now that Roe v. Wade is, is passed, we have um, activists now that are Republican are trying to expand the abortion laws here in Oklahoma to give more rights to women to have abortions. And so that's happening. At the same time, you have the uh, transgender, the uh, the the uh, I would say the transgender agenda for people under the age of eighteen to take uh, puberty blockers, things like that. Um, they fight those types of bills at every 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 end, and uh, it's just yeah, no, it's difficult. It's even difficult to get education choice things passed here in the state of Oklahoma because of how much the the uh, I would say lobbyist corporations control the state Senate and the state and the state house and the structure that's theirs is crazy. So yeah, no, it's, it's to go back to the point earlier that you made, it's two heads of the same snake. It really just depends on who is willing to step up and fight that agenda and to really stand for conservative values. And like I said, there's only a few and praise God for, I know Elon Musk, I'd say has done more in the past, in the past 10 or 15, I'd say 10 years, I would say in the past two years for conservative principles in the culture than any Republican politician, probably in the past 10 other than president Trump. Uh, okay. So with, with this, uh, you know, it looks like uh, in Oklahoma, if you want to be elected, you just should run with the Republicans. Otherwise, yeah. it's it's just the only way to make a career to start yep. a career. Yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, in the places where I came from, when we have a political party, the political party had a certain like uh, bylaws, and you have to, if you want to be a member of the party, you have to kind of accept these bylaws, or you can call it maybe like statements of faith, if you want. Uh, and if you will, if you will start going out of this uh, agenda, if you will start speaking against it, then you may be just throw, uh, just kick off out of the party, just because like, hey, we're here for the certain political uh, ideas. If you don't following it, why do you even hear? Maybe you should just go and find yourself another party that will fit your narratives so uh is something like this exist at least theoretically in republican party or it's just really a club of friends who just get together and just you can say anything you want believe anything you want and proclaim anything you want how it works because i really don't know how it works here especially yeah. especially back there in europe we have you know a lot of many parties many parties can participate here it looks like i have just two party and if you have a two party and uh, I have to lean to one or another and I right. don't have any other choice. I'm just like, OK, so if I'm a little bit uh, closer to conservatives, then I should go to Republican Party. And if, I, if I'm a little bit closer to socialists, I should go to Democratic Party. But maybe I'm not really kind of full minded into this agenda. And how, how does it work? Is it anything like a bylaws or... I'd rather say the statements of faith. If I, I don't know the right 
uh, make yeah. a word for it, but something that kind of uh, I have to sign, like I'm, I'm becoming a member of a party because I believe this, 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 and this. Yeah. No, it's funny because it's a good question. At In the GOP, um, in the in the club that is the Grand Ole Party, the Republican Party, we have a, a platform, which we vote on every year, that this, each state passes and then the nation passes um, at the national conference. And every year at the state level, it's put forth by a vote that we should have legislators sign our platform <clears throat> stating that they agree with it or stating why they disagree with certain points before they get elected. And the truth is, is it never passes hmm. because the party is overwhelmingly because you said there's these two big parties and uh, George Washington spoke against this in his farewell address that if you have a by bi, bilateral, I mean, two system, two party system, um, you're going to have people fighting the other side just because they're the other side and not even because of the principles in which they stand for. It's just because they're on the side. And what will happen and what's happened now is Oklahoma. I don't know if you know this mix 20 years ago was a Democrat state. We had a supermajority that was Democrat here in the House, a supermajority that was Democrat here in the state. And uh, it was we were a blue state 20 years ago. And what happened is a lot of efforts of grassroots movement and the reality of what the Democratic Party has become in some instances shifted. And so cons Oklahoma turned red just recently. And so there's still the same. If you go to most Republican Party um, meetings, there's people there that believe just like our governor and they support him that green energy is a good idea, that investing in green energy plans is a great idea, that socialization on a fiscal level is a great idea, that uh, abortion isn't that big of a topic, that uh, all these things that you would consider common conservative social fiscal principles are now up for grabs because like, like it's just a party. It's just a club that you can get acquainted with. And there's not really any steps to say because – even on the state level, in the national level, you'll hear this. We want to be a big tent party. What that means, if you hear that language, we want to be a big tent party, means we want to accept as many views as we can politically inside of this establishment that is republicanism. So you, 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 you neuter yourself of any actually strong beliefs when you do that. Uh, I don't even understand, to be honest, uh, how it's supposed to work because <laughs> the whole idea of political party is people partying together because they have a common values and common beliefs that's the right. whole point so if everybody believe everything they want why do they even a party yep so, so we, we uh, as far as i can understand what you're saying it it means that uh we cannot actually tr because the whole idea is that okay i'm going to vote republicans because they're following the certain narratives right uh, but it looks like we don't have to even look what the what party the person represents we have to look at his personal beliefs and values and what he's talking about right bec because it can turn out like he can be a, a republican but following whatever agenda of like having like Karl Marx portrait on the wall to yeah. call him some Republican. <laughs> that's, no, that's, yeah, that's right. You're absolutely right. Okay. So, um, so it, in that case, can we even talk about their Republican policies or. I mean, I mean, yeah, we, I guess you, you could, you could uh, kind of talk about the state of things where we're at right now as a, uh, as a nation, as a state, if you wanted to. Um, and we could, it, we could go from there, but it's up to you. No, no. Uh, what I mean is that uh, is, is there a, even exist like uh, something that we can say that this is a re <laughs> Republican platform or uh, if, if, if anybody can come up with any kind of ideas and still be a Republican, is it even, uh, I mean, can we even say that Republican platform is exist? No, I would say not. I would say you'd have to come up with culturally what do, what do Republicans in the and I would say the majority of Republican voters stand for? That's probably what you'd have to do. What they actually vote on, um, yeah, that'd be the that'd be the only thing that you could base it on. And right now, um, it's interesting. I don't know. I think um, the hope for the Republican Party 
is going to be. I think Donald Trump right now is one of the biggest hopes for the Republican Party because he is a uh, how would you say it? He is a a marginalizer that pushes people into taking certain positions like he forces the hand. So it's hard to be lukewarm. Um, if a better way of saying it, it's hard to be middle of the road with a guy like Donald Trump being an officer being there because he's going to push you to make a decision either for or against him. And right now the Republican party loves to stay neutral. I guess that's probably the biggest problem. Yep. So, um, if we talking again about, uh, the all this situation, how do you think? Well, actually, what I would like to ask is uh, if we're talking about the, the historical even uh, platform for Republican Party and how it started, it it, it is rather uh, Hamilton Party than Patrick Henry's party what, that, that it was from the beginning. Now it turned into Patrick Henry's party, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so maybe it's just maybe it's just making a circle and going back to this big government uh, uh, group. And with that being said, maybe it could be a good idea just to uh, to to start talking about a multi-party system and to step out of a two-party system. Maybe it could work better, and of course, I, I cannot give any advices here because I'm a, I'm, I'm a like I'm an immigrant, and <laughs> this is this is what people remind me all the time when I'm start t- talking about things like this. Hi, you're just an immigrant. You're not created this. It's our system. But uh, but uh, I mean, sometimes maybe you can see something better if you're a, if you're a foreigner and you look from it like, hey guys, why do these stuff like this? <laughs> it, can, it can work better if you do it a little bit different. Yeah. No. So, so, how do you think? Is is it is it possible, uh, or or is it just a theory, or it's possible, or it's there is some intentions with people like with the conservative even movement, or I believe actually that there is a bunch of people in the Democratic Party that are not uh, fully agree with the whole agenda that uh, people like Bernie Sanders coming up with, right. and so maybe. Even they would like to kind of have a few different parties with which will kind of like maybe some social democrats more uh, than uh, uh, than a freaking Marxists like they are right now. Uh, how do how do you think? Is it like because you know the situation from the inside out? You you know what people think. You know how right. how they people who not just voting but people who involved with the party. So yeah. No, yeah, the more that you can, and I want to say this is, and it's good that I'm not a part of the GOP, I mean, I would say leadership, the more that you can start other parties, um, I would say, and it, I want to go back to what you said about you being an immigrant, I think you're right, like in this short conversation, are like, yeah, it makes sense, we should probably, um, if we don't have a platform that people hold to, there's no point in having a platform, and that you're right, most people don't even get that, the local level, the Republican Party, if you don't hold your legislators accountable or hold people accountable. There's no point or purpose in having a value system. And I think you get that. A lot of people don't get that, which is already kudos to you. So I would say your opinion, I, I just would say your opinion is welcome for sure. And we need it in this country, especially coming where you came from. But uh, I would say, no, the more that you can take power away and, and diversify power. And I might go back to this thing earlier is I'm a hipster Kenry guy in the sense of, uh, he really fought for the sovereignty in which states had. And right now, the more I think, the more that we dis- diversify and spread out the power that one party has, you're going to give more power back to people. You're going to give more power back to, it's like in uh, the UK right now, their, their political party. If you, have a, if you have a pivotal vote and you need a smaller body that's present, to help leverage that vote, you play towards the smaller political party. You, but because you need to make sure that that party is actually going to vote with you, you you establish coalitions, and so you have to change your political stances. Right now, um, there's no standard, and there's nothing to actually point towards and say, "Hey, we're going this direction." 
It's all, okay, let's just keep the ball rolling and make sure we keep this government funded. So, yeah, I think the solution is, in part, to go back to what George Washington said in his farewell address, is we have to break this you know, bilateral, this bicameral system up, that it's not just two parties. Um, it, if there was three or four, and I think in Oklahoma you're going to see this, I believe there is a, uh, a party trying to, starting to be formed right now, which is called the, o- the Patriot Party here in the state of Oklahoma. We already have the Libertarian Party. We have the Independent. The Patriot Party is getting started here in Oklahoma. I don't know what that's going to do. Um, I hope that it you know, um, takes a little bit of footing and helps pull power away from some of the Republican establishment, but it's going to be a long road ahead. And I think the, uh, I think the future looks good for that. So I think that's a great idea, Mix. Okay, so uh, from from these inner um, problems, we probably could turn uh, now to more like uh, international and and this is the question that uh, that I have and that a lot of people have um, actually about uh, Republican Party and foreign affairs. And I think yeah. we, we, we had this conversation before, uh, I guess, a few times. Uh, and because uh, I'm saying that the Republican Party totally withdraw themselves out of any foreign affairs. And then uh, it, it's happening like they g- gave it up for Democrats, and Democrats control all the foreign affairs, they control all the foreign governments, they in uh, contact with all the you know, all the groups, uh, uh, political groups in, in in every country, I guess, right now. Yeah. So when it comes to the situation, uh, I mean, when when it's just when it's just a uh, calm and nice days, it probably doesn't hurt much, uh, at least visibly, visually. Yeah. But um, but in the situation like. Uh, going on in Europe now. I can't understand Republicans who say that uh, while the Ukrainian government is fully kind of with the Democrats and stuff, that's why should we support them if they support our enemies? On the other hand, well, you guys give it up. You you never even try to get involved with uh, with the groups that really trying to establish freedom and uh, uh, democracy in a good sense of democracy, not a democratic party kind of democracy, which is more like a right. Soviet Union kind of democracy. But uh, the real, the real democracy and uh, f- f- uh, freedom of speech and freedom of uh, economy and uh, things like this. So uh, it turned out like uh, every political group in the world, uh, if they have a friends in between American politicians, it's the Democrats. And yeah. they don't really go deep into what's going on right here in the United States. Right. They just know that, okay, we know those guys, they're friends. So mm-hmm. everybody who's against them, they're enemies. Right. So uh, is there any uh, intentions in the Republican Party to, to build up any uh, foreign relationship with uh, some political groups that more? Because I can tell you that even in Russia, mm-hmm. we, we had... Uh, in anti-Putin uh, movement, we had a lot. Of, we had a, like half of them are left wing, half of them are right wing. Right. But at the end of the day, everybody's contacted with the Democratic Party because it's the only party that's coming and want to be <laughs> contact. So yeah. you, just, you just don't have any other choice if you want to build some relationship with a foreign uh, politicians. You will do it with a Democrat part, Democratic Party. So it, is there any effort in a Republican Party? to somehow get involved in the foreign affairs? I would say right now, honestly, um, the major narrative that I see is more of an isolationist narrative and more of because of what we've seen from as a Republicans by even, I would say, Republican and Democratic presidents, there's this, I, on the grassroots level, there's this want and a need to remove ourselves from foreign intervention because of the atrocities that we've seen America's done in uh, Iraq. And uh, I would say even um, what we've tried, what we did in Libya, what we tried to do in uh, um, Syria for a while there, because of the, the intensity of the, the corruption that's happening in our, in our intelligence agencies, most of America doesn't trust anything that happens here. 
And so the trust for government affairs abroad is even more skeptical. So I think it's we have to I mean, you and I both agree on this. We have to be engaged in foreign affairs because it's a global economy. We have to. Um, but I think even, yeah, most Republicans right now, because there's such a lack of trust, even in our own election system, they, their stance is, um, well, and this is interesting because the, uh, um, Putin has done a good job of this, of propagandizing the Republican base in, in the United States it really has, because there's a large amount of people because they see uh, Russia as being socially conservative. That's what they see. And they see Ukraine as being socially progressive. They actually support Russia over Ukraine, which is interesting. But uh, I would say most of the cases we don't want to do anything and we do want to do something. We just want to fight the Democrats. And like you said, because they already have the foothold in it, we want it. We almost take the wrong position. There's no efforts right now that I see, but I'd like to see it. And I hope to see it specifically. And I don't want to get off on a rabbit trail here is with China. China, I think, is a huge, huge threat. One of the probably the biggest threat right next to Russia when it comes to Western democracy. And uh, I think we have to do something, though. Well, China definitely have uh, more uh, more power compared to Russia, just even economically. Yeah. And the human resources, they have way more people. They have like 1.6 billion people, and Russia have <laughs> just one, uh, 1. 1.4 million, uh, 140 million. So right. compared to it's like, of course, even if Chinese just will start coming into Russia, just coming by their feet, they will just feel all Russia, and Russians can do nothing because they just, I mean, they will just stomp on them and <laughs> go over them because there's, <laughs> it's just too many of them. Uh, but with all that, you know, I, I can understand uh, and I see the weakness of Ukraine in this uh, in this uh, situation. And we're talking about it all the time in, uh, on our platform uh, that Ukraine is absolutely gave up all the information and all the information that Americans get in English about what's going on. there coming from Russia and from Russian like Russia Today and Russian sources. And Ukraine is doing nothing absolutely in this field. So it's not surprised. Uh, because, you know, in fact, Ukraine is way more conservative than Russia. I mean, the mm. population, not the few people in a, polit in a political field, but the, the yeah. population is, and what, again, what some uh, American conservative doesn't know, that we got, uh, like, at least one third or maybe even more uh, people in, a, uh, in Russian government structures and uh, Putin's close uh, circle is LGBTQ people, mm. uh, but, but the people here don't even know that <laughs> because they just they just don't dress like they do in the United States. They pretty kind of they look like uh, uh, you know they they don't show up, they don't show off like uh, like some uh, guys uh, here in the United States. They don't dress like women and stuff like this, but right. they still kind of I mean they this is what in their heads. And I just know it because I've, I've been involved there for years and I just know who's who. So uh, Russia is definitely not that conservative as people think <laughs> here. Yeah. And uh, my point is actually what I'm trying to deliver here is that Ukrainians are, uh, Ukraine is a great potential uh, uh, ally for the United States, for conservative United States, as Israel on the Middle East, the same Ukraine could be in Europe because Europe, uh, Ukraine is one of the biggest, well, it's actually the biggest country in, in, in Europe and uh, had an amazing economical potential. So uh, it's always sad to see how conservatives doesn't get involved with Ukraine because they can build a very serious strong base there and you know, Ukraine can become a locomotive uh, in Europe uh, because we need to stand against what the uh, European Union is doing now because what right. the European Union doing now right now is they're trying to build a uh, Marx type of socialism yep. there exactly like the Democratic Party trying to do here. Yep, and I think that's the biggest thing that American conservatives, I think, at face value are worried about. They see Ukraine trying to align with NATO um, and trying to align with a lot of um, uh, European countries like Germany for a like France 
And the fear for them is, like you're just saying, is that it's going to become another situation like that or even a hub bed for globalist power to take place. And so, I, but I think we both agree that the answer isn't to like, okay, just let Ukraine do whatever they're going to do. I think it's to actually be a little bit more in, in I would say, um, intentional about how we pursue helping Ukraine um, with the Russian situation instead of just throwing money at them. Like you said, we talked earlier, instead of just throwing money at countries that want our support, actually intentionally helping and saying, what can we do to help your nation? Yeah, I, I, I agree totally with, uh, with this. And uh, by the way, just, to, just, just so people could understand that uh, Ukraine leaning now to anybody who can help because yep. they really need help because Russia's bigger. Uh, Ukraine really need help in this war. They're really fighting for surviving of the, of the nation. It's not just some territorial uh, uh, misunderstanding because uh, Putin is really... Uh, trying to destroy the nation as it is. And of course, uh, if, if they couldn't find any support like from, like from American conservatives, so of course they're going to lean to anybody who can help. Right. And uh, if it could be NATO or whatever, not, NATO is not a big support anyway and not a big help. Uh, and, uh, and if you've heard this uh, abbreviation for NATO is... Uh, no actions uh, talk only. That's, <laughs> well, that's, yeah. the, that's the new. Uh, that's the new name for NATO. Uh, but with all that, uh, people really in Ukraine, people are concerned that Republicans are standing against assistance to Ukraine, and they want totally withdraw all the help. And yeah. They want. And they totally want to give it up to Putin. So. Uh, as 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 a person who knows the situation from the inside out again, uh, what what do you what do you know uh, about what people really think about it on a grassroots level? I, I mean, I think that it's, it's so it's so polarized, like everything in uh, in American politics right now. I think you have a large amount of people that are honestly. Uh, they, they even and this they trust i would say they, this is a hard statement to say mix but they trust russia more than they trust the american government they wouldn't say that but there's a large amount of american conservatives and i've even heard this going around which is really crazy um i've heard people say that putin is uh, a, a direct descendant of abraham and that he's jewish and because of that he's doing the lord's will here in the, the United or in, in in the Ukraine, and which is, and this is interesting though. It's just interesting, um, and I also have friends from Syria though that are Syrian Christians, that because of Put because of America's inaction against ISIS and Putin's action against ISIS, they support Putin over the American government, and so we're stuck in a weird place that the the general populace in the, in the United States, conservatives do not trust America. They don't trust our our military. They don't because right now our military is top to bottom with uh, our the head of our special operations is for diversity and uh, pro LGBTQ openly inclusive. He said inclusivity is our strength. Diversity is our strength. The head of our special forces. And that's um, all across the board. So American conservatives right now, because they're so polarized against what's happening in our nation, they're they're ha they're taking weird stances, taking weird stances politically when it comes to um, foreign policy. You know, honestly, I'm 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 sure that. Well, first of all, I just know that uh, uh, Mr. Biden was uh, working with the Communist Party of Soviet Union, and he yep. was a lobbyist for the interests of Soviet Union in the United States Senate for well, in the years back in the nineteen eighties. So I believe he's still keeping these contacts. At least they keep these contacts with him, even if you don't want it, uh, because this is how KGB works. So I believe that they really work together. And uh, I believe that uh, personally, it looks like, you know, this uh, throwing money into Ukraine, uh, I believe it made on purpose to make people get angry with Ukraine finally. <laughs> Because, yeah, because look, they don't they don't announce anything like that. They throw in yeah. money everywhere, but they don't announce it like they do with Ukraine. 
Right. Here it's like, hey, hey, Luke, we're going to throw another billion. You know, and it's like, hey, guys, why do you even talk about it? I mean, yep. Uh, but the the other thing that really kind of ticked me off is that uh, I don't know if you know but that uh, the United States is still uh, financially helping China. Oh yeah, <laughs> and, and and we help a bunch of countries. Uh, around the globe that kind of burning the United States flags, uh, yeah. uh, chanting death to USA, and we still kind of send them our taxpayers' dollars. Yeah. And it looks like nobody cares, but when it comes to Ukraine, it's like, oh, stop financing Ukraine. Stop financing China, maybe. Uh, <laughs> or how about, why, why don't, do, do anybody even care about this? I'm just, I'm, I'm just asking, do people even know it or discuss it? or No, I, I don't. I did a special, I think it was um, probably probably four or five months ago on the Uyghur situation in China and China's China's uh, social credit score, China's uh, lot like oppression of civil rights in their in their spread into. Cause I don't know if you know, they're probably the largest distributor of security technology for other nations like uh, they become the largest producer of that very, very quickly with their. Uh, and so they're creeping their they're creeping their hands in other nations, and they're using micro loans and macro loans to do that. And then so what they'll do is they'll lend these countries their uh, they'll sell these countries their security equipment to surveil their people, to oppress their civil liberties. And then they'll say, hey, but here's the deal: if you don't pay it, it's fine. You just give us access to all the information that your country gathers. They're becoming a globalist police force in their own right. A, a United States and Kentucky. Our, one of our Kentucky military bases had Chinese surveillance equipment that the Chinese had access to less than five years ago. And American people are like, yeah, no. And so I think, and I, I talked with a economist lawyer, Mark Nuttall, who worked for Xi Jinping. Um, if we're going to go to war with anybody, it's China. And as soon as if we would, if, if America would sanction China today, they would, they would probably declare war on Taiwan. And they would have to make alliances, but they would tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of people would die sequentially in the next few months because of they don't they, they don't they don't produce anything other than cheap products through labor. And Russia fuels them to make sure they have oil. So there's this uh, and a few other countries assist with that as well. But Russia's the big one. And so you're right. It's no, no, but people don't know that I, I did a presentation on it. And everybody's like, what, China? I'm like, yeah, China's the biggest threat right now. So, uh, but talking about this financial part, does anybody in GOP actually worry about uh, that we're spending so much money on the countries that don't even need help now? I mean, they, they pretty yeah. much established, or even if they don't, but if they hate us, why should we su support them? Does anybody even think about it? Because yeah. it looks like everybody's so upset about helping Ukraine, but uh, how about <laughs> it being upset with helping everybody else? Yeah, it's not consistent. I told somebody this. I don't know if you remember this mixer where you were here in the United States when this happened, but there was a uh, big push by Ron Paul back in the early 2000s to audit the Fed and then end the Fed. A huge push that drove people into, uh, I'd say, a huge part of young adults into realizing, wow, our national debt is insanely high. And that was actually a big part of the election in when, when Trump was first election, elected about what they're going to do with the uh, national debt. And so I would think that for the most part, no, Republicans in America has become so accustomed to uh, just wasting money that it's almost irrelevant to them. Um, the only thing that's starting to see them move the needle in it is inflation and the price of goods is starting to creep up and creep up and creep up. And so now people are getting a little bit more concerned. But I think I reached out to I tweeted at T Thomas Massey, congressman, and he actually and he liked it and he shared it, which was awesome, he, uh, which I thought was a huge deal. I, I like I fangirled over it. But it was a uh, it the tweet was um, he was asking people what should be the next step for him politically. And I said, you need to run another like campaign throughout the nation to to end the Fed, to audit the Fed or fiscal transparency to completely get away with our national debt. Um, and uh, he, he that's what he liked to share. So I think we're going to have to wait to see a, a figurehead like him to really use his leverage to create another movement like that. We have to have another movement 
and America for fiscal transparency. It's just, it's, and I say this, it's not very sexy. It's not very good looking. Most people don't want to talk about fiscal transparency. They want to talk about, like you said, very flashy things like, uh, uh, like, like the Democrats do. But uh, yeah, there's not really right now, there's not a huge talk about it. It's, it, it's not a huge deal. All right. All that sounds not very impressive for the future. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I wish I could bring you better news, but. Uh... <laughs> well, uh, you, it's, it's better to bring what's right than what's impressive, you know. So thank you very much for being with us today, Kyle Brown, uh, ex chair for Logan County Republican Party, uh, conservative activist, and. Uh, and a good guy, my friend, by the way. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, thank you very much. And that was a hot dog. And uh, we'll, we'll see you guys next Saturday for sure. Have a good one.